<coughs> Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 1249. Please turn to it. Page 1249. There are eight grading problems. You will see the you will see the first four on page 1249. Let's get going. The first four are quite straightforward, very, very simple. Number 31. In number 31, we are told that we can do, we can do between 12 and 18 per hour. It really makes no difference to us what it is that we are doing. Whatever it is, we can do between 12 and 18. The question simply is, how long, how much time, do we need how much time do we need to do 72 whatever that range is we find we pick one value in that range and we just create it in so let's get going so we have to do 72 of them we can divide by the larger number first because dividing by larger number will give us a smaller value here larger value here divide that by 18 Divide that by 12 and that's what we have to do. So let's do this, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 6. 18 has 3, 6. 7 has 1, 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 2, becomes a 12. And 12 has 2, 6. We can go one more, one more round. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. There you go. So that's 4. Let's do the same thing here. Let's divide top and bottom by 6. So that gives us 2. 7 has, 7 has 1, 6, just like before. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. That one goes and joins the 2, becomes a 12, and 12 has 2 sixes. Let's do one more round, and this time we can divide by 2. There we go. Looks like between 4 and 6 hours, just grade in 5. I'll, I always grade in the middle value, just to, just to be on the safe side. There is no need to be fancy. If you have a range, just find a whole number in the range, just grade it in, instead of de dealing with decimals or fraction. 5 will do nicely here. Number 33. Number 33, or other, number 32. In number 32, we are told, we are told that we are going to cross a bridge. The bridge has a weight limit. It has a weight limit. I don't know why I cannot write. Bridge has weight limit of 6,000 pounds. There is a sign posted on it. It says weight limit of 6,000 pounds. We are carrying X boxes. We are carrying X boxes and each box weighs, weighs 14 pounds. The truck itself weighs 4,000 pounds. The question simply is, what's the maximum, what's the maximum number of boxes that we can carry in the truck safely? What's the maximum number of boxes that we can carry in the truck and still observe the weight limit of 6,000 pounds while crossing the bridge? So let's get going. So the fact that the truck carries, the truck itself weighs 4,000 pounds and the, and the weight limit is 6,000 pounds, which means 2,000 pounds is the most, or rather not 2,000, I made a mistake here, that's not 4,000. The truck weighs 4,500 pounds. The truck weighs 4,500 pounds. It, the, the overall weight limit on the, on the bridge is 6,000 pounds, which means the most that we can cross, most, most we can carry is 15,000 pounds. And we're carrying, we're carrying boxes, X boxes, and each of them weighs 14 pounds which means 14 times x, whatever that is, has to be less than or equal to 1500 pounds. It can be equal to, but no more than that. Let's divide both sides by 14. 
we divide both sides by 14, which means we end up with 1400 or 1500 divided by 14, which is same as which is same as 1400 divided by 14 plus 100 divided by 14. This part is quite straightforward, or rather, I didn't mean to cross out the zeros. I meant to cross out the 14. This part is quite straightforward. We're simply going to get 100 here. Let's find out how many 14 does 100 have. We know. We know 70 is made up of 5 14s. How do we know that? 5 14s are 70. How do, we, how do I know that? Because 10 14s are going to be 140. 14 times 10 is 140. Half of 140 is 70. So that's, that's, 70 represents 5. Let's add one more 14. If we add one more 14, we get 84. It looks like we can go one more round. So that's 6. Let's do one more. That's going to give us... There you go. That's the most we can carry. So that's 5. That's 6. That's 7. So there we go. So, the, so x has to be less than or equal to 107 pounds, or rather 107 boxes. If we were to carry one more box, we will be over the weight limit by 12 pounds. Because we have 2 pounds left over, the box weighs 14 pounds. We can only carry up to up to and equal to 107. That's, 107 is much more to agree in. Let's do the next one, number 33. Number 33, we have a graph here, and the question simply is, what's the ratio of the number that was sold in 2008 to the number sold in 2011? We just want, they just want the ratio, so let's look at the graph. looks something like this. We have this. One, two, three, four, and five. It starts with 2006, 2007, 2008. There is 2008 right here. And if you look at the graph in front of you, you must always have, as I always remind you, the book in front of you. You must have the book in front of you. It makes life easier. So if you look at the graph in the book, because sometimes my graphs are not drawn very nicely, you will see that that gives us the reading of 100. So that's 2008, that's 100. That's 8, 9, 10, 11. Looks like 11 is the very last year that they show here. 2011 is the very last year that they show here. And if you go up on the graph, you will find that that is 160. As I said, it's a very straightforward, very simple, simple problem. The ratio is 100 to 160. Ratio of numbers sold to 2008 to 2011 is 100 to 160. Divide top and bottom by 10. It's 10 over 16. Divide by 2 or one more time, and you will end up with 5 8. There you go. The question is, the question is, could we have left this thing? Could we have left this thing in this form? The answer is no, because to to grade in this thing, we would, we would have needed. We would have needed five slots, one, zero, and then slash, and one, and six, one, two, three, four, five slots. And gradient answer sheet, as you look at it, we only have four slots, so we have no choice but to reduce it. Do you understand? Let's get going. On the other hand, on the other hand, something like this, four over ten, we don't really have to reduce it if you don't want to. Because that's enough, we have four spots. So answer is five eight. Number thirty-four. Number thirty-four. Number 34 says that each slot is 30 minutes long. The question is, total number of slots in a two-day period. That's all they want. How many total slots we have in a two-day period? Nothing to it. We know, we know one day, one day is equal to 24 hours. Obviously, two days are going to be 48 hours. That's 48 hours, and each slide is only half an hour long. So we just have total number of slots. Therefore, total number of slots is simply going to be 48 times two, because each hour has two slots. 48 times two, eight to the 16. So it looks like. 
96 is the answer. 96. We're going to stop right here. That's the end of that page. Tomorrow, tomorrow, day number 80, day number 80, tomorrow is going to be our very last day and a very long journey that we started a long time ago from exam number one. Tomorrow we're going to finish the very last page of very last, very last exam and by tomorrow we, we will have done the entire book, every single math problem in the entire book. Which, And if you have not done all the problems yourself, it's high time that you do that before you sit for the exam. The more you practice, the more comfortable you will get with it and get, get with the exam. If you wish to get hold of me, I can obviously help you with the math portion. I can also help you with the grammar portion, which is the writing part of the SAT. I can, and I can most certainly help you with the vocabulary part. If you want to work on the vocabulary on your own, you can watch the series of videos, 100 videos on my channel. Just type in SAT vocabulary words day one. Start the series, you'll learn all the words, most frequently appearing words on the SAT. If you wish to work with me, if you wish to work, if you wish to hire me to help you get ready for the exam, send me an email. Go to my website at keshwaniprep.com. Send me an email. I will talk. All right. Bye now.